All right, so what is going on YouTube? Today, I wanted to talk about a little thing or some interesting things that I pretty much thought about and it's involving these two cards. Now, before we get into the video, I would like to say if you do enjoy the video, leave a like, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you have not already. I upload a minimum of three videos a week, so you do have something to look for at least three times out of the week. And also, click a couple of ads to help support the channel, which will be very helpful. Um, and yeah, I'll and I'll thank you guys for your support. So without further ado, let's get into what I wanted to talk about. And I know I said that pretty, pretty fast. Um, don't worry, I'm, I'm working on getting a microphone. I'm just trying to find one. I went to Target, they didn't have any. So I'm probably going to go to Walmart, Best Buy, stuff like that, try to find one. If you guys know any good mics for cheap or something I can buy online, let me know in the comments below. So, you know, I can definitely get to that because I understand that sometimes uh, it does sound kind of wonky using a laptop uh using the laptop microphone but yeah that's the only thing i got right now so let's talk about what i you know what you guys clicked on the video for so <clears throat> an important thing to remember um if you guys are going to play competitive or you guys are just getting ready for idle launch you have to remember that uh, i'm pretty sure you, you know most of you probably already thought of this or you know it just goes over your head because when i first read the card i thought it was only for idle launch but it is not only for Eidolons. You can fusion summon any fusion monster from your extra deck, but you just got to use the materials from your hand. So basically, what I pretty much um, thought of immediately after I you know, re read the card, I was like, okay, so uh, not after I read the card, but I was thinking about how to counter this deck. And then like I remembered this card and I thought, holy shit, if you get rid of the Eidolon, it's completely up to you. I don't know how you feel, you know, when you play. Do you do you care or do you trust your opponent or whatnot? But if you do get rid of the Eidolon monster, if you get rid of Alistair, you can legally check your opponent's hand and extra deck because the card does say you have to fusion summon. Uh, you have to fusion summon from your extra deck. Now, uh, I don't know how Konami's going to rule it. I don't know if they're going to say that, um, you know, you just check the extra deck. But you should you should be able to actually check the hand because you have to make sure he doesn't have fusion materials, and you also have to check his extra deck to make sure he can't go into anything. And that that is something important that I think people need to remember because you can do the same thing with polymerization. If you like, if they activate Eidolon and you if they activate polymerization, you like chain like Mind Crush, you chain Deck Devi, uh, not Deck Devi because you're already going to see the hand. Mind Crush is the same thing. Like if you somehow get rid of the card. And then they say, okay, I can't fuse anymore. You can check. Like, legally, you can check. Now, I don't know how they're going to rule it. Like I said, it's all, it's, it, every every ruling is different to each judge. And uh, it really depends on how they, they feel and how you feel. Do you trust your opponent enough to believe that they don't have anything to go to? Or if you just want to gain an advantage. And I understand that, you know, a lot of people may look down upon it. But, hey, you're trying to get, is, if, if you're at a regionals or if you're playing for something, you need to, you know, get as much advantage as you can. And that is a actual ruling, I believe, that would be enforced. But, like I said, I don't know. This is pretty much just my thoughts on it because I know how, that's how polymerization works. And that's how most other cards work because if you activate something and then, like, you can't resolve it, you have to prove to me that you can't resolve it, like a tingle or something. You, you can check your opponent's deck, stuff like that. So, that's just, you know, something I thought that was interesting to pretty much bring out to, you know, the masses and stuff. If you guys did not know that ruling or, you know, even if you did, you know, I just wanted to, you know, bring it up to get a discussion. What do you guys think? Do you think that like that is cool to uh, not cool to do? But do you think that like that is kind of a douchebag move to do to, you know, check your opponent's hand and their what's their name and their extra deck? Or do you find it like, you know what? No, you activated the card. You know, you have to prove to me, you know, let me know in the comments below. And also. I mean, no, not also, but the next thing I do want to talk about is this card, Lawn Mowing Next Door. I'm not calling it the grass, whatever that is, because that's just, that's too long for no apparent reason. Um, Lawn Mowing Next Door, if this becomes the meta, do you think that decks would just naturally bump up to like 45 to 50 cards? Because don't forget, we still do have Pot of Desires at three. As of recording this video, we still do have Pot of Desires at three. So, I mean, it wouldn't really hurt because Pot of Desires is going down and it may get reprinted. So, would you th would you think that uh, most people to counteract this deck, this, <clears throat> I'm just talking like if the deck is out of control and it's the best deck and it's winning everything. Do you think that, you know, bumping up the deck size to 45 to 50, like your personal deck, just bump it up to 50 just so you can counteract this so they won't pretty much have a super huge advantage to mill 20 cards? Like maybe they only get to mill eight or depending on how, how high you go, you know, 
just to keep your deck consistent, like if you go 45 to 60, that means um, they're going to mill, you know, at least 15. But well, that's if they don't use other cards or if you don't use other cards. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that uh, I actually would bump my deck up to like 50 or 45 because, you know, you can't go wrong with extra cards. Um, there's always some good cards you can add to your deck. But I think that if this card or this deck does do, like, if it just does major damage to where Zodiac, I mean, <clears throat> Zodiacs are going to be in possibly every top 32 deck. But Zodiacs aren't going to be the best deck. Like, Zodiac deck is not going to be the best. It's going to be something future in Zodiacs. Uh, you, you never know. It might be fucking Fluffles. It might be even Metal Foles with Zodiacs. I don't know what it might be, but... I know it's not going to be a pure Zodiac deck because there's uh, there's a lot of better utilizations of, you know, using the, uh, I know that sounds kind of strange to say that, that uh, the own deck can't use it the best, but I'm just saying, like, what I mean is, to they is other decks that can use the engine to just make it more powerful. Like, there's, there's a, there's, you know, there's decks that, you know, you can incorporate Zodiacs in and just make the whole deck just better than, you know, anything that original Zodiacs can do because, like, um, like I, like I said in my last videos about, you know, detect the side against Zodiac. One dark hole and you're done. Like, if I put Zodiacs in something like Kaiju, like, that deck is just crazy because all they need is a Slumber and a Zodiac, and they can OTK you. Um, you can put it in your Sinjus. You can put it in, like, a Beast, like a Fire like fire Fist deck. You can put it in anything. So, uh, that's, that, that's going to be around regardless. But I'm just thinking, uh, if this does become meta, what would you do to your deck? Would you keep it at 40 or would you bump it up to 45 or 50? Or do you think that everybody's going to be like, you know what, just to beat just to beat this deck, or if, if I ever have the chance of going against this deck, I'm going to put bump up my deck to 50, 52 cards, something like that, just so I can't lose to this deck, you know, when they draw a lawn more because it's only going to resolve for like 8 to 7 cards. So, yeah, that's just two little interesting things I thought about. Let me know what you guys think. Um... Do you you know do you think that's do you think that this is actually going to become like the best deck or do you think that is this going to get lucky and then you know it's going to win probably a few it's probably going to top here and there do you, what do you think this that this deck is going to do um so yeah let me know in the comments below let me know what you think and whatnot uh so yeah that is the end of the video for today thank you guys for watching like comment and subscribe upload a minimum of three videos a week so you guys do get that and also if you guys can click a couple of ads to help support the channel. And that would be very good. So thank you very much. And I will see you later on at 1 o'clock with, with, with a new deck that you're not going to expect me to be playing.